Hello and welcome back to Fuse Entertainment, this time for my review of 2005's Underruled Evolution. Uh, well, Underruled Evolution, my own personal opinion of the film, um, this one has a lot more story to it than the first film. And it really tells you the back stories of the whole Underruled mythology and where it all started and came from. The action is spectacular in this. There's a lot more going on when it comes to the action of the movie than in the first film. It's just a much bigger film. I would say it's a little bit more, I don't know, elaborate as well as stylish versus the first one. Oh, the first Underworld in 2003 was definitely a spectacular movie. Underworld Evolution, this really expands on the universe of it all, and this really raises the bar in quite a few ways. Alright. Well, I'm going to do this pretty quickly and just fill in the gaps. The saga of Underworld Continues is about raises on between the Death Dealers, Vampires, and Lycans, Werewolves. The film traces the beginnings of the ancient feud between the two tribes. As the beautiful vampire heroine, Celine, Kate Beckinsale, discovers that she has been betrayed by her own kind and must seek revenge. The fast-paced, modern-day tale of deadly action, ruthless intrigue, and forbidden love takes them into the battle to end all wars is the immortals must finally face their retribution. All right, um, well, I'll fill in the gaps on it. What they really are saying is, following the events of the previous film, um, Selena and Michael are on the run um, after Selene has discovered obviously, from the previous film, that Victor slaughtered her family. But we find out why. And find out why, during all that, at the same time, the original vampire, the alpha vampire, awakens from his slumber, and he, does, he f finds out everything that happened in the first film. And that, of course, be the vampire Marcus, or the elder Marcus. And she discovers her roots of what really happened when she was turned into a vampire hundreds of years ago. As her family was slaughtered by Victor. She discovers that Victor was, uh, um, used her residence to, to imprison in a immortal's prison in Laverith of, of sorts. Um, the very first werewolf, William, who was the twin brother of the very first vampire, Marcus. And he just simply couldn't bring himself to kill her, so he turned her into a vampire and fed her the bullshit story that werewolves killed her family. Which is not the case at all. Then we actually discover um, the original immortal that started everything, the father of all immortals, Alexander Corvinus. He was the father of Marcus and William, with the whole, you know, legend that was told in the first movie, the Corvinus clan. Two sons, one bitten by bat, one by a wolf, plagued the to walk the earth for all eternity, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and she he discovers that the necklace that she wears around her neck, it, or so I say, the necklace that is in these movies, the, the, the necklace that Lucien had, that she had, ha, has in this movie, all of it is actually part of a big, a big key to the ultimate prison that imprisons William. Marcus discovers this after... Um, slaying a rest of the vampires at the coven and going in his pursuit of Selene he wants to get the key so he can free his twin brother 
William and played Jerome. So with the help of the original immortal, Alexander Cravenius, their father, Celine, the special powers that she never had before, it allows her to walk in the sunlight and be stronger than any average vampire. And of course, there's also a love story between her and Michael as they fall madly or deeper, deeper in, in love. And Michael deals with the fact that he's half vampire, half werewolf, and he's a hybrid and a, a creature none like any other. In the climax of the film, um, basically both of the original, actually all three of the original mortals, the father and the two sons, meet their uh, pending death and destruction. Which leads us to the great beyond is to what the next Underworld movie will be about, which you will get much later in this Screen Gems event. Because there's a few films you got to get through first before we get to that. Now that's pretty much the plot of Underworld Evolution. Um, the next Underworld movie that we'll, we'll, be, we'll be reviewing obviously is not the sequel to this, it's the prequel to the first film, which is Underworld Rise of the Lycans, which will be sooner than the sequel to this. If I do it for a sequel to this over the prequel to the, to the first two films, but we will watch the prequel first, obviously, for continuity purposes and to keep it within the year, year release cycle of the Screen Gem series that we're doing for this horror film festival event, or I'll hear say the first event. Um, all right, uh, the quality of the movie. This one was shot in, um, it originally was shot in 2.4.1. This one is actually one of the rare occasions that this film actually was shot in 2.4.40.1. Um, this was not shot in 1, sorry, in 2.35.1. Now I know a lot of, a lot of these, these Blu-rays are movies that are shot in 2.35.1, then later modified to a 2.40.1. This is not one of them. Every single release of this movie has always been a 2.40.1. And how you know this, because um, you know, I like, always like to give you guys a little bit of how you figure things out. Um, the only format that actually changes the um, abstract ratio of a movie is Blu-ray and um, re-released DVDs. So if you get your hands on the original DVDs, They'll have their original aspect ratio. And the original aspect ratio of Underworld Evolution is 2.40.1. Um, now, the original sound source of this was actually DTS 5.1 and Dolby Digital 5.1, but you had the option of English PCM 5.1 uncompressed audio, which is how I watched the movie. <clears throat> um, much like um, Resident Evil Apocalypse, this is when you have to turn your volume down about three, four notches. I have to deal with that where, uh, in, in my house because I don't have anyone anyway, live in the house with me. But um, you, um, if you have people around you, you live in an apartment complex and you have a good system that can play that back, you're going to have to turn it down to slightly. The when Bunker Press means it's going to be loud, so expect a lot of good effects flying around, but expect it to be intensified audio. And that's the case with, obviously, Resident Evil Apocalypse, like I mentioned in the last review. Um, in picture quality itself, this one reminded me a lot of the first one. It still looks a lot like a cool-temperatured almost like winterized looking um, cinematography of a movie. So you have a lot of cool temperatures and it looks a lot like a digital movie. So a digital movie with with cool cool temperatures. With cool temperatures but with good rich detail and contrast balance. Um, obviously there's not really any red tones in there or warm tones. Neutrals are not they're, they're there, but they're balanced so well with cool temp temperatures that it kind of looks like a cool, minty-like looking movie. That's kind of, I, that's kind of what the way the first film looks too. 
And that's definitely the, the case with this one. I, uh, it's for the third film. I haven't seen it in years, but I'm pretty sure the third one is, well, I'll be seeing the same thing. But, um, like it or hate it, I liked Underworld Evolution from 2005. Do I, do I think it's an inferior product to the first film? No, I think it's, I think it's actually a superior movie to the, to the first film. I thought this was a much better movie than the first film. The first film did, was probably doing a big thing of introducing us to this universe. Well, this one is just doing a good job of just being a good good ride, a good adrenaline rush of a movie. And that's certainly the way I look at Unreal Evolution. Well, that's, um, that's all for this one. I will see you guys again right after this for my review of the next film because I am a little bit behind and I'll see you guys soon.